Hunter, I know you're awake in there. You just replied to me. Good. You answered. Getting hard to keep finding ways to say open door around here. And despite what Robbie says, I don't think the staff of one speaks high elven. Blood magic stuff. Cool room. Spacious. Aw, is that bed for Charlie? Yes. So, if you're planning on giving me some sort of brooding code of the stoic warrior speech, I'm immune. Just ask later, Magic. From what I just saw out there, whatever crazy ancient living weapon stuff Caretaker put you through back in the day did a real number on you. We got a lot of work to do. Work? Yeah, talking to people, making friends, basic human stuff, or quasi-human. <laughs> You're a midnight sun now. One of us. Nico, I was just Hydra bombed. I could use some rest. You and me both. Been bad dreams every night for me lately. I, uh, keep seeing Wanda. She... Never mind. I will meet you outside. Yes! I'll go nuke us some popcorn and you pick out a movie. Oh, and it may just be the two of us. The others went outside, needed to cool off. Really need to hang a fan over that forge. Or maybe crack open the casket of Agent Winters a little? Ah, I see. As long as Caretaker doesn't come up with some busy work in the meantime, I'm perfectly fine here at home. Something tells me you don't have a favorite movie. Well, we can start you out with one of my favorites. It's cool, I can wait. It's good to punch Hydra in the face, but they feel like a red herring. Okay, a black and red herring, but still. In school, they never taught us about Hydra's role in World War II. Do you think modern Hydra made sure of that? Where does Hydra find so many troopers? There's no hiring app for goons. But if there was, I'd call it a goober. <laughs> I get why they name themselves Hydra. If you're all about insidious corruption, no one will take you seriously if you're called bed bugs or black mold. I hope you knocked some sense into those troopers. Gig economy or not, Hydra is no way to pay the bills. It's good to punch Hydra in the face, but they feel like a red herring. Okay, a black and red herring, but still. I know this entire situation's gotta suck for you. Not just the whole resurrected, chosen one thing. I get why facing Lilith won't be easy. I was 15 when I found out my mother was capital E evil. Sorry to hear you went through that. It was bad, but I learned to deal with it. It's the only way forward, right? Look, I'm glad my mother is gone, but yeah, at times I just 
want to hear her voice again. Some days I'd give anything to make that happen. It makes me hate her even more. Lilith gave birth to me, but Caretaker was my true mother. Right, so your adoptive mom raised you to kill your birth mom. <laughs> You'll fit in perfectly. Uh, enough about our crappy parents. You missed out on decades of good movies. It's my solemn duty to fill this knowledge gap with the best examples I can provide. So, the first thing you need to know, the glowing briefcase is a metaphor. Can we do it again? So, what did you think of the movie? I understood more than I should. How? You've been dead for three centuries! I'm not so sure I was dead. Not exactly. I recall a deep slumber, not the void. I... I dreamt. Of what? Of everything. Much of this world is familiar to me. I know it from my dreams. Uh, that's not creepy at all. So, do you know everything? No, I... Uh, think of it like this. I know what a car is, but I have no idea how to drive. You're up to date, but not omniscient. Then I'm guessing you don't know much about me. Just what you shared earlier. You're always free to ask. Like, what's the staff of one, or who were the runaways? I had some questions about your staff. Uh, sure. Uh, but first, um, the basics. The staff of one interprets words or phrases as spells, but it can only cast a spell once. No repeats. Can you tell me how the staff of one functions? It's, uh, blood magic, so my own blood is required to summon it. You wouldn't believe how many adhesive bandages I go through each year. What about the words you speak? They come true. Uh, kind of. And not always the way I expect. It's like making a wish, but you can never make the same wish again. I had some qu- Go- If each magical effect is unique, do you worry you will run out of words? Not really. I only use the staff's power when I truly need it. The rest of the time, I rely on more conventional means. Like, you know, magic. I had some questions about your old team. The Runaways? Sure thing. Were you all heroes who banded together? No, we were normal kids. We saw each other once a year when our parents got together to reminisce. And then we found out two very disturbing things. <laughs> First, our parents were supervillains who sacrificed children to evil gods. Second, each of us had some sort of powerful birthright. Our parents wanted us to follow in their footsteps. What did you do? We ran, but eventually we realized only the six of us could stop our parents and their dark gods. So we faced them and stopped them from destroying reality as we know it. You know... Typical kid stuff. Who was on the team? At first, uh, Chase with his mad science gear, Molly, our pint-sized powerhouse, Carolina, the solar-powered sweetheart. Gert had a telepathic link to Old Lace, a genetically engineered Deinonychus from the 87th century. I handled the blood magic, though I didn't understand it much. And Alex? Uh, well, we don't talk about Alex. Where are your friends now? Molly attends Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Carolina left Earth to marry alien nobility. Gert? She, uh, she didn't make it. After Gert passed, uh, Chase and I had a falling out. The last I heard, he and Old Lace are living at his family home in L.A. As for Alex, uh, 
He chose his side, and it wasn't ours. He died with our parents. I should get going. Uh, good, good timing. Um, looks like caretaker wants to speak with you, and wow, I should get to bed. Time flies when you're hanging out. I'm glad to see you're using your free time productively. Whatever it is that Faustus knows, he's willing to make any sacrifice to protect it. The next time he's cornered, maybe his own life he's forced to take. Looks like you're finding your way around. Maybe making some new friends. I was planning on getting some rest, but... Things are moving at a frantic pace. For all we know, I'll be landing a jet on the roof with Mr. Stark this afternoon. Not quite like it was in the good old days. To stand still is to move back. You got that one from Agatha. She used to say it all the time. I always preferred, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Used to? I am sorry. I should have had this talk with you much sooner. But you should know... Agatha... She's no longer with us. What? Th that is impossible. She was so... Fierce? Indomitable? Or maybe just kind to a fault? The loss could not have been easy for you. Thank you for that, but it's not just my loss. It's all of ours. And what makes this loss even harder to accept is that it was completely avoidable. Agatha died in an accident caused by her protege, Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. The Midnight Sun's latest recruit, a powerful spellcaster in her own right. Perhaps the most powerful Agatha and I had ever seen. Wanda's abilities were growing. Too quickly for my liking. Agatha was determined to help her control them. I tried to caution her, but she would not listen. There was an incident. An accident, I'm sure, but... Agatha was killed. Yes, incinerated in an instant. Not even Ash to remember her by. The others were heartbroken, as was I. But I also saw the danger, the threat, if Wanda's powers were left unchecked. So I did what needed to be done. I sent Wanda away, to the Sanctum Sanctorum, to study under Doctor Strange. I know the others still harbor a great deal of resentment towards me for it. Wanda's powers were so out of control they cost a life. Your decision may have saved lives, if not the entire Abbey. I like to believe that, especially given her current situation. Ah, <sighs> Wanda, Agatha, it seems we have lost them both now. I conjured a small shrine to Agatha's memory on the grounds, hoping to find some solace, a way to move forward. You should pay your respects. Maybe you'll find what I couldn't. Good night, Hunter. I remember when I used to go out on these missions myself. At least I can always rely on you to get the job done. They don't all need to be battles against some infamous demonic threat. Sometimes a nice straight fight is all you need. Don't downplay the importance of winning these minor battles. We need everyone to stay sharp. Every mission is important, especially when you're still learning to work with new allies. 
Keep this up, and I doubt Lilith will have a leg to stand on by the time we find her. I remember when I used to go out on these missions myself. At least I can always rely on you to get the job done. Agatha. You always did have the most remarkable eyes, Hunter. Just like your mother's. Maybe that's why you're the first. The first? To commune with the spirits, of course. <laughs> Is this a trick of some kind? Because I am not amused. No, it's no trick, dear. You're just the first to see me. By now you've heard I had a bit of trouble with my corporeal body. I actually find it quite liberating. You are dead. Always straight to the heart of things. That's my hunter. You seem strangely at ease about this whole thing. After a thousand years of living, you learn to take things in stride. Even death. And what have you been doing all this time? Meet me by the cave just over there. You know the one. The Bloodgate? Caretaker always told me to stay away from that place. I think we can safely lift the veil on a few more of our secrets. What's the worst that can happen? What is it, Charlie? Find something? Hey, Charlie Warly puppy face. looking portal is known as a blood gate and you're the only one among us who can pass through it blood gate caretakers handiwork yes sarah got a little overprotective after the accident with wanda it's become something of a habit for her i have noticed that what lies beyond is meant for you as much as it ever was for her assuming you're up to the challenge that is you know i am I do, but it's always polite to ask. Ominous indeed. The portal awaits. It may look scary, but the trial beyond, well... Don't be afraid. The portal awaits. Is it? 
There was a time when the blood stood within these celestial halls to prove their worth. This particular arena belongs to a goddess who often favored Sarah, Ashtor. Sarah, caretaker, was here? Nothing ever comes easy, dear. The Elder Gods felt their descendants needed to earn their blessings, which is why they created these trials to begin with. Trials? I should. This entire realm exists for that purpose. Trial by combat, with no chance of outside interference. Yes, but I may have found a loophole they never considered. Why don't you try summoning your four-legged friend? <laughs> Charlie? The old gods are responsible for a great many creations, including your faithful companion. I think even they tend to forget that. Good luck, dear. As the goddess of balance and order, Ashtor was sometimes called the giver of justice. You can expect a fair fight, or at least her idea of one. You were too weak for this fight. I saw a move like that once, centuries ago. Now that was something. They cannot possibly match your strength. To our girl, these hellhounds are nothing but mindless beasts. Don't hesitate to strike. They certainly won't. Behold the light's gift! Impressed.
Your mother abandons you. Good girl, Charlie. Oh, and you too, Hunter. You finish this trial, but don't worry. The other gods are waiting. This place, but it's your birthright, and I think after everything you've been through, you can handle it now. The two of you, as well as your mother, are the last of your kind, the blood. Your lineage follows an unbroken line to the old gods themselves. And if you call upon them, you might just find they're actually listening. They won't work miracles for you. But their blessings can be quite useful in the right circumstance. Why don't you ask the goddess Ashtor for her aid in dealing with that barrier over there? Oster smiles upon me. After all this time, it's still just as beautiful as the first time I laid eyes on it. It's hard to believe Lilith and Caretaker brought this place all the way from Transia. Of course, it was no coincidence that they wound up so close to Salem. This area is particularly attuned to the forces of magic. That's why the Elder God's influence was so prevalent here. And why our sanctuary here has remained all but impregnable over the centuries. <laughs> and now I'm rambling on like an old Sorcerer Supreme. Why don't you come see me in the library tomorrow night? Oh, and... Let's keep this just between the two of us for now. I'm afraid Sarah... Uh, caretaker... Isn't ready to see me yet. Good night, Hunter. Hey, Charlie Warley puppy face. Thing on? 
Hunter, please come to the forge at your earliest convenience. Again, that's Hunter to the forge. Thank you. Uh, strange out. See, Hunter, you're so much more than a weapon. You're fun. More doesn't mean better. If they want to be part of the team, they'll have to earn it. Tony Stark used to be the ultra-rich jerk I saw on TV. Now, he's the ultra-rich jerk who needs more. Hunter, just in time. His royal weirdness and I were deciding what to do with that nasty little Hydra gift box you found. Ah, yes. The spooky crate? The very one. Though it is far from any mere container, I assure you. I am detecting powerful emanations from inside. If this is a sign of what Hydra is after, I fear we are all in grave danger. My offer still stands. I could fly the thing up and nuke it in orbit. Only way to be sure. Or we could open it, Tony. And perhaps use the mystical energies I sense inside to our advantage? Yeah, I heard a we in there. <laughs> Green goopy gamma serums are one thing. I'm not opening boxes full of mummy curses. You don't have to. Hunter, if you'll allow me. Your second funeral, boss. Caretaker isn't big on the idea of hardwiring this place to an arc reactor. As far as I can tell, power here is distributed mostly via cobwebs and ghost farts, anyway. Thanks to the miracle of modern Hellfire, we have a near-limitless power source that, for whatever reason, burns ice cold. So much for science, right? Does this place smell funny to you? It's not the Hellfire. There's something funky about here I just can't seem to place. All this time, I figured these flames were connected to some kind of underground caldera. Boy, was I wrong. I'm convinced now there's something down there, under the forge. Seriously, ask Strange. It's monster breath. The caretaker isn't big on the idea of hardwiring this place to an arc reactor. As far as I can tell, power here is distributed mostly via cobwebs and ghost farts, anyway. Thanks to the miracle of modern Hellfire, we have a near-limitless power source that, for whatever reason, burns ice cold. Whatever artifact is inside, it's better off in our hands. If Hydra is now working to acquire mystical antiquities, then our situation is very dire indeed. We need to find a way to gain the upper hand. And you think you can do it with whatever's in the container? Tony has one of the greatest scientific minds that I've ever seen. I, of course, have an unparalleled understanding of the mystic arts. I have no doubt that we can find a way to research whatever we find in there and have it work in our favor. I just wonder what it could be. I hope the two of you create something powerful. I want to stop Lilith quickly and decisively. As I said, I'm sure it can help us. I just need to convince Tony to set his ego aside. His discomfort with the esoteric nature of the Arcane might be a problem. But Tony's eccentricities aside, I know you can make this work. Right now, with the Sanctum out of my reach, I'm fighting with one hand tied behind my back. It, metaphorically, that is. If I can find items to research, I can give the Midnight Suns every possible advantage over Lilith and her disciples. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Me too, Hunter. Now, all this talk is going nowhere unless we can get this container open and study what's inside. Approach the anvil, Hunter. We do not have time to spare. I just hope you brought me something interesting. Hosts of Hoggoth. I, I can hardly believe it. What? 
Is it worse than you expected? No, it's totally unexpected. It's the Eternity Dagger. This was in a place of honor in my bedchamber in the Sanctum for years. The Sanctum Sanctorum is no common domicile to be burglared. These barbarians have no idea what they possessed. Or perhaps they did. Maybe these artifacts are exactly what Faustus and my mother were after to begin with. A distressing thought. If they had my dagger, then who knows what others of my priceless possessions have passed through their greedy fingers. The cube of nothingness. The tear of Prophia, and most worrisome of all. Your toothbrush? You, uh, had a little coffee thing going on this morning with your breath? Oh, Tony. Sorry. Doc's right, Hunter. I drank three glasses of holy water just to walk through the Sanctum's front door. This is like a doomsday vault for all sorts of supernatural nastiness. We need to put a lid on this mess. Pronto. I believe Carol is already working on it. At last. Now that this artifact has been returned to its proper owner, we shall see if we can make use of the mystic forces contained within. These were relatively common at one point in history. Remind me again why you haven't digitized this stuff already? This is going to take way longer than it has to. There's something to be said of the careful study that can only be achieved by examining the physical documents themselves. Oh, so it's a Zen thing, then? You become one with the old book and it shares its secrets with you? Always quick to mock the things you don't understand. Oh no, I'm honestly interested this time. Maybe I can adapt your technique into something normal people can use. I'm going to take that as a compliment. as well. How's it going, boss? You're welcome, Hunter. Come back tomorrow, Hunter. See you, Hunter.
Hey, Hunter, uh, got a sec to spare? You have not set anything on fire today, have you? I will see if I can find you a treat later. You are the best girl. You know that, right? Feeling good today, girl? Who is a good girl? It is my Charlie girl. What you doing, Charlie? Hello, my sweet girl. Good girl, Charlie. There is my ferocious Charlie girl. You are the best girl. You know that, right? There's more to this workspace than meets the eye, Hunter. These flames aren't born of any fire. Were I less skilled in the art of meditation, Tony's presence here would be extremely disruptive. As it stands, he still manages to be a minor annoyance, even on the astral plane. Despite what the name might imply, I doubt we'll be doing any traditional forging, per se. Although I did hear Tony mention something about a magnetic field induction nano... Not really my area of expertise. You'd think with the Abbey having such expansive grounds, I wouldn't be forced into a communal workspace. I suppose we all have to take one for the team occasionally. The magics involved in moving the Abbey and its surrounding grounds were nothing short of remarkable. These flames have likely burned for hundreds of years, if not longer. There's more to this workspace than meets the eye, Hunter. These flames aren't born of any fire. Were I less skilled in the art of meditation, Tony's presence here would be extremely disruptive. Does this place smell funny to you? It's not the Hellfire. There's something funky about it. Just in case. You moving into the Forge, Hunter? You've been here more in the past few days than I have since... ever. The forge is pretty badass, but the creature trapped inside riles up my own inner demon. Um, speaking of, there's something you should know about me. You are bonded with a spirit of vengeance? Damn, you're good! How could you tell? You are not the first spirit of vengeance to join the Midnight Suns. I fought beside another, just a few days... <clears throat> three centuries ago. Oh man, um, sometimes when I have crap to work through, I like to get my blood pumping. Why don't we hit the yard for a sparring session? I know Sparky's excited to meet you. Sparky? That's what I call my spirit of vengeance. His real name is something you'd see written on a symbol, but with like 12 apostrophes. Also, he's not allowed inside after the incident with caretaker Sumerian Sofa. I am the Scourge of the Lilith. My name is whispered in fear across the Seven Hells. When I fight, I make war, not make-believe, Robbie. Be sure your Sparky is ready to do the same. Damn, Hunter! You talk the same kind of smack that he does. Okay, let's do this. I'll get Blade to set things up. Won't take a minute. I will head to the yard. Um, when you and Sparky trade places, what does he look like? He's the guy with the flaming metal skull and hellfire chains. Kinda hard to miss. Ah, I see. Hunter, ready to get your burn on? I'm talking training with Ghost Rider. Spirits of vengeance train the hardest. 
Nice to get some fresh air. Hardly any cobwebs or ghosts out here. <laughs> like playing with fire. Maybe you should be the speaker. Let's do this. Hunter, report to the war room. We've got a mission. Got a minute, Hunter? Crazy world you woke up to, Hunter. Hydra running around causing trouble. Apocalypse prophecies. The Bronx. It is indeed, Daywalker. And that op against Faustus. The way Captain Marvel just absorbed that bomb. Unbelievable, isn't it? Are you trying to make a point with this? No. I mean, I just wanted to catch up. I see. Well... She's something else, though, huh? Excuse me? Smart, quick-witted, fearless. Hell, she even glows. And do you find all of your allies equally impressive? Yes. No. Wait, wait. What are you trying to say? You're not used to expressing feelings of affection, are you? I have no idea what you're talking about. My apologies. And if I did, this ain't my first rodeo, you know? Of course it is not. Whatever a rodeo is. Yeah. Well, now that that's settled, maybe I should go sharpen my stakes or something. And maybe we should keep this uh, chat to ourselves for now. Not bad, Hunter. Guess I owe Nico a little money. I thought the Ghost Rider would be tougher. Hunter. Nobody knows exactly what it is you... Hunter, putting me through my paces. Looks like the new suit checks out. That's a mean left hook you got too. I think I swallowed a little brimstone on that one. Does the night sky seem darker than usual? I had not noticed. Why do you ask? It's just off somehow. I swear the moonlight on a clear evening is too dim for this time of year. Same with the torches outside the abbey. No, but I do not wear shades at night. I have a certain aesthetic I prefer to maintain, and you're missing the point. My concern, as always, is vampires. Darker nights give them opportunity, mobility, and more chances to feed. That is disturbing. That's the world I know. We should do this again. Is that your way of getting my attention? I don't paint, but we ran out of red. Thanks, Hunter. I needed some R&R. &R. Another new member? We should probably start charging dues. Yo, it's good to see you. Technically, it's Roberto. But you can call me Robbie. Everybody else does. Man, I just wish I could have brought my brother Gabe along. He'd love this place. Uh, sorry if I went a little heavy on the aftershave. It's not easy covering up sulfur, you know? 
Man, I just wish I could have brought my brother Gabe along. He'd love this place. Regardless of what Mr. Stark thinks, the mirror table was guiding our hand reliably for centuries before the advent of computers. You called for me, Captain? Keep telling ya, Carol works too, but yeah, I did. Now that Tony's finally starting to get a handle on his gremlin problem, I've been able to put Central to good use. Got a lead on some particularly gnarly Hydra operations happening in the city, but we need to move fast if we want to intercept them in time. Then let's get going. My thoughts exactly. There's just one problem, though. We seem to have lost our gatekeeper, Magic. Lost? Well, I updated her on the mission. She said something I can only assume to be a prolific swear word in Russian and disappeared. Literally. And with no magic... There is no passage to New York. Or anywhere, for that matter. Now you see my problem. Every second we delay is a victory for Lilith. I have little patience for child's games in the midst of our war. No argument there. Look, I don't know if you've noticed it, but she seems to like you. I've known magic just about as long as you have, and all I've gotten from her is a few grunts and words I'm afraid to translate. Maybe you'll do better. <sighs> Fine. I will retrieve her. Well, when you phrase it like that, I'm sure she'll just be begging to help. Good luck, Hunter. I shall return shortly. Fingers crossed. Not much more I can tell you, Hunter. Though I did hear her mutter something about Wanda right before she poofed away. Maybe that helps. Thanks, Captain. I shall find her. Not a bad place to be posted up, all things considered. At least I'm not down in the dungeon with Tony. The plans laid in this room have probably helped save the world more times than we know. It's too bad most people won't ever see it. Tony really wanted to impress me with this new opera. If you've come to ask me where magic is, the answer is, I don't know. She doesn't talk to me very much anymore. She blames me for Wanda. I fear if she doesn't let her go, it will cost us all. Go find her and talk some sense into her, will you? We don't have much time. Go find her and talk some sense into her, will you? We don't have much time. Hey, for someone they just dug up, you look pretty fresh. Nico, do you know where magic is? We need her. Uh, let me guess. To open another portal? She's getting a little tired of being the only person here who can do that. Can't say I blame her. This is serious, Nico. Where is she? Hmm, not sure. But I know she's been looking for Wanda's grimoire, so maybe check in Wanda's room? Thanks for your help. Speak. This room belonged to the Scarlet Witch, did it not? Wanda. It belongs to Wanda. Let me guess. You are to ask me to do the one thing the others value me for. Opening their precious portal. Well, I am in the middle of something. Come back later. It is never easy to lose a comrade. I know this too well. We did not lose Wanda. We let her go. Before any of this started. Wanda's first grimoire. Agatha gave it to her when she was teaching her witchcraft, the dark arts. She was trying to help Wanda control her powers. She would never let me read it. 
So now I read it. That is no child's book, whose focus for one second can be lost completely within its pages. Let me guide you through it. You do not own the darkness, Hunter. I was also raised within it. So much so, I barely remember a time without it. And now Wanda has this in common with us too. I know what she's going through. To come face to face with true evil itself. To be dragged to some hell dimension so hot that your soul is scorched black. Your heart so filled with soot that it chokes out all the bright parts of you. Until you are just a dark thing of smoke and ash. I cannot let such a fate happen to her. We will find her. I can feel it. And just who will find her? Caretaker? The Avengers? Do not try to fool me with your false empathy, Hunter. I know Caretaker will never waste the resources looking for her. Ileana, just open the portal. You are like an Avenger. All you do is take, take, take. You expect too much. <sighs> okay, I will open your damn portal. It is time such as this that I wish someone else here could drill holes through space and time. Perhaps Doctor Strange should spend less time tinkering with Tony Stark in the Forge and focus more on his magic. Ugh, no matter. I will be there when you are ready, Hunter. Goodbye. <laughs>